years of uncertainties resulted in the resettlement in seven developed countries, including Australia, despite the large majority of the Bhutanese in exile looking forward to get back to the country from where they were evicted. As Nepal and Bhutan failed in finding solutions, and while India maintaining silence despite its role in eviction, resettlement was an alternative for these people to seek light into the new course of their life. The first family landed in Australia on 12 May 2008 with hopes to begin a new life, begin a completely new journey. More families followed Accepting the challenges the resettlement may pose as this migration brings in a complete overhaul in their social values, lifestyle, language and culture. We will never regret for the choice we made to come to Australia and make this great country our dreamland. We faced difficulties, challenges and obstacles, but we are the happiest lot. And as you have seen, we have resisted those difficulties, overcome the challenges and drew new lines of hope for a brighter future through our unified efforts. In South Australian context, that unified effort began with the formation of Putnis Australian Association of South Australia in 2009. We have received appreciation for the efforts we made to settle here so quickly. This resettlement is termed in many references and government discussions as one of the best success stories of Australian resettlement programs. The progress we made in a very short period of resettlement steps we took to engage with the wider Australian community and initiative we commenced to call Australia our permanent home is worth to remember. We wish this legacy continues and forms the precedence for future resettlement programs that Australia undertakes. In a decade after resettlement, we are established very well in every state. Most of us are now Australian citizens, have bought houses, progress well in professions and establish businesses. We have built the closest intimacy to being an Australian citizen and contributed towards social, economic and political progress of this country. We have a radio that runs every week Saturday disseminating community information, running inspirational stories and talking about contemporary community needs. Listen to 89.7 MHz every Saturday 7 p.m. Now in six years of operation, the radio team expects cooperation from interested Bhutanese community to widen the scope of its reach and participation and support from the Australian government to build our skills and expand the programs to positively influence Bhutanese Australian community and its friends. We have ethnic school specifically targeted to young people to learn Nepali language when they start schooling. This is to ensure they continue their attachment to their culture and language. We would also thank South Australian government for including Nepali as an optional subject in the formal education system. We have overwhelming enrollment for these classes and I run three days a week. In all spheres of learning Nepali language, there are tremendous support and enthusiasm from both students and parents. We endeavor this to continue. Our youngsters have versed well in sports. The annually held football or soccer as it is called in Australia, volleyball and cricket matches speaks a volume about young people having interest and enthusiasm in sports. We are culturally very rich. The intra-diversity is manifested 
through several cultural festivals held throughout the year, strong community bond and support from service providers and government is essential to strengthen this unity in diversity and present this bond as an example to wider Australian community for peace and cooperation. Let's celebrate this success and plan for a better future together. Can you please wish us all the best?